from the uh, recent progress in the SCI uh, indicators going to where we need or where the country needs to focus uh, on further improvements. Although we are faring well uh, in terms of now total number of publications ranking at third position instead of, I mean, uh, in terms of the quality of publications, we are much behind. We are currently ranking at ninth position where we need to really focus on how we can improve the quality of publications also. Then participation of women in the extramural research uh, activities Although it had doubled in uh, recent few years, but it is still very low. At 18.6% only, we are uh, uh, having the participation of women into direct R&D activities. Then instead of uh, resident patent filing, we are at the seventh rank uh, uh, now, but we are way behind China and the US. Then, Although in terms of GRD, gross expenditure in research and development, we are faring well or we are, uh, it is consistently increasing. But in terms of the percentage of uh, I mean, GRD in uh, in relation to GDP, we are close to 0.7%. In fact, in the recent survey, it is just 0.64% only uh, for the year 2021 as we have recorded. And we are way behind most developing countries which are mostly above two percent then in terms of global innovation index although we are doing well we are far behind the major economies uh, however one good thing is that uh, in 2020 uh, 2022 we have fared at uh, 40th position and in 2023 recently as per the wipo report we have secured the same position only no uh, further progress but no uh, uh, going, I mean, uh, no, no uh, change in uh, the going down also. But we, there is a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, a lot many countries which are much ahead of India where we need to also, or we are aspiring to improve also. In terms of full time equivalent researchers or the total number of researchers in the country, which is 3.62 lakh. Seeing the number of 3.62 lakh, it is a good number, but if we compare with our population, we are far behind majority of the countries in the developing world and developed world. Uh, we are fairly at 262 per million population right now, wherein some countries like Israel and South Korea are almost having 8,000 researchers per million population. So at least we cannot achieve to that level, but at least we should go uh, to target. I mean, at least we should target to double this researcher community in terms of our population and in terms of our requirements in the country also. Coming to some of the key challenges and priority issues, one of the biggest challenge in our country is inequitable participation in science with respect to gender, with respect to social fabrics, regional diversities, and economic diversities. We can see one example we saw uh, the gender, uh, in terms of gender, it is, it is only 18.6% uh, participation in the direct activities of R&D. Then in terms of regional diversities, we can see uh, some areas like uh, south and west are doing little better in terms of science and research and in uh, in fact some of the uh, institutions in the north also but the eastern side and the central india and northeast india are particularly way behind in terms of the uh, conducting science and uh, research and development then in terms of economic diversity also it's the same problem some of the states which are economically forward are doing good in research and uh, other states or other regions are not able to compete at that level. In terms of institutions also, the eminent institutions like IITs, ISER and some of the other eminent institutions are able to do well in the research uh, and development uh, scale. But 
most of our state universities and central universities are not able to compete at that level. Then we have the limitations in the access to scholarly knowledge also. Some of the institutions like IITs, ISERs, and other national institutions like IIT, uh, sorry, uh, NITs and triple ITs are able to get access to good amount of scholarly knowledge or access to research journals. But if we go to the universities uh, uh, in the states and central universities and our postgraduate colleges, they are not able to access because of lack of enough funding. Then access to research data. We do not have a uh, good infrastructure to share our research data, which can be shared from, um, if it is a public funded research, then whatever data is coming out of those research studies can be shared with other institutions or other researchers for further use, wherein we are lacking this uh, sharing of data or making it available to other researchers. Then in terms of infrastructure also, which is a basic requirement for research uh, in the laboratories, we are not able to provide research infrastructure equitably. Some of the institutions are having adequate amount of research infrastructure, but uh, if you go to the colleges, uh, PG colleges or state universities, even basic uh, research infrastructures are not available wherein they are deprived of carrying out some good quality research. Then uh, there is there has been a de debate always whether we should go with competitive funding or competitive research grants wherein everybody is equally treated. The research proposals are received, the research proposals received uh, from the institutions across different states, different regions should be treated or uh, evaluated equally or there should be some equitable distribution, consideration of equitable distribution of funds with respect to the background of the institutions or the <coughs> region where from they belong to or the category of uh, institutions, whether they are state universities or uh, the uh, research <coughs> institutions or, or uh, the national level laboratories or the academic institutions. So uh, there has been a debate always and uh, where we can fa fare well or uh, uh, do justice to all the institutions or all the researchers across the country. Then there have been relatively lower participation in science in respect of the numbers uh, uh, in reference to our population, which is already, uh, uh, already I have said that it is 262 per million population, whereas other countries are having almost several thousands. Then uh, the country lay, uh, lays a uh, any mechanism which can encourage or incentivize uh, the researchers' efforts for carrying out market-driven R&D. We are doing well uh, in research and we are ending up with just a publication wherein the scholarly knowledge is shared. Uh, we, we, are able to uh, we are able to publish in good uh, ranking journals also. But somewhere we are lacking wherein we can convert that knowledge into a technology and that technology can be transferred to industry wherein it can go to market so there also we are lacking maybe because of uh, a, I mean because of lack of uh, a mechanism where it can encourage or incentivize the market driven r d or it can provide a channel also towards the uh, I mean, towards the technology reaching to market then we have already seen it is low R&D investment uh, in terms of our, um, in, in reference to our GDP, we are not able to uh, invest much into research and development. There are limited interconnectedness within industry and academia. We cannot see much examples of collaborations between industry and academia. Either the industry is not trusting the academia or the academia is not trusting the industry partner. That's why there is not much collaboration between industry and academia, whereas in case of those countries wherein the R&D intensity is very high, it is mostly driven by industry. The problems are uh, coming out from the industry and the academia or the research institutions are mostly into giving a solution to those problems. And there is a good, it, it requires a good trust or good interconnectedness between these two entities. Then low GRD to GDP, and uh, we say it is mainly because of inadequate private sector investment and it is, it is true also we are uh, 
having nearly 36% of the total investment in, into R&D in the country coming from industry sector, whereas majority more than 70% or, or sorry, uh, more than 60% is coming from the government sector, wherein we need to bring more or we need to encourage or we need to uh, bring more investment from industry side into research and development, then only we can fairly uh, scale high in the scale of GRD to GDP ratio. Then we lack uh, any working model to connect industry and uh, industry government and academia. Although in uh, globally there are different models applicable in I mean, applied in different countries, but for the specific conditions in keeping in consideration the specific conditions in the country, uh, particularly India, we need to fine tune those global models and bring out a suitable model which can be applied for industry, government and academia part participation or partnerships in the research and development uh, activities. Then we are largely, the country is largely dependent on the import of technologies because although we are able to fairly do well in the research side, but we are not able to convert that research into a technology or uh, transfer it to an industry because of the low technology readiness levels. So there is a valley of death which has been discussed at several platforms but we are not able to improve that significantly so uh, this is one sector where we need to address uh, the problem or we need to address the level of uh, the technology readiness level so that industry will accept the technologies then we do not have a standardized assessment framework for research so far the research is assessed uh, uh, based on some selected parameters and mostly it is the how much how many publications we are bringing out from the research we are not able to scale it or we are not able to evaluate it whether that research is also being utilized or that publication or that knowledge is uh, being utilized somewhere uh, either for uh, a industrial application or for a societal purpose such kind of parameters are not included in the research assessments we are limited to the uh, The research quality of research publications only what is the impact factor of a journal or what what kind of uh, uh, different indexes while evaluating a uh, person's uh, uh, research ability to that i index and f index that's all then we have weak interlinkages and low retention retention rate of trained human resources if you see uh, uh, to my uh, second slide wherein I have shown that uh, we are doing well in terms of uh, STEM graduates, almost 2.6 million STEM graduates are coming out of our education system. Then how much we are able to absorb into PhD? The PhD scholarship or fellowship which is provided in the country is not higher than 10,000. That means only 10,000 fellowships are being offered for conducting PhD. Then if you go to postdoctoral, it is less than 1000. That means we are not able to provide adequate opportunity for carrying out research or pursuing research in the country. That's why most of the trained resources, human resources are going away from our country and we are losing probably. Then we do not have a robust science communication system for addressing the language and regional diversities. The science we are conducting or the research we are conducting in the country is mostly in English and many of our uh, population which are belonging to different regions are not comfortable in English and we are not able to provide the information or the knowledge in their comfortable language. So there also we are losing some uh, quality human resources who are not able to continue or we are not able to pursue in the English language. Then we need to also establish a robust STI along with STI policy governance and mechanisms. Therein also we I mean, currently we do not have a strong STI policy governance mechanism in the country also. Then coming to uh, some of the factors or some of the uh, points wherein we need to improve. We have a broad vision of uh, research and development in India for the future. So currently we are able to carry out the research and development mostly in incremental pattern. 
but we need to focus on focus more towards the profound research or risk taking research and development then so far the research being conducted in the countries uh, been driven by the academia based on their areas of interest or based on the uh, based on their backgrounds but we need to also see the quality of research how we can improve the quality of research and relevance of that research relevance in terms of uh, what are the requirements of our society what are the problems of our society and what are the national priorities for the country we need to focus and reorient the research towards that direction then also yeah prioritizing the research into the national aspirations also which are the areas our country wants to uh, gain uh, a technological edge or leadership we need to focus on those areas and bring leadership or gain a technological edge also in those areas in terms of knowledge and technology development then we need to also focus on how we can improve the speed of implementation also as per the existing mechanisms most of the implementation processes are delayed because of many red tapisms and many other issues also because of rapid uh, uh, i would say rapid uh transitions into new and uh, newer mechanisms of uh, uh, implementation then as a country we are lacking adequate resources as we can see we saw in some of uh, some of the previous uh, uh, slides we are not able to provide equi equitably uh, uh, or equitable uh, access to the resources available whether it is knowledge or whether it is the r and d infrastructure so within the existing resources or availability of resources how we can improve or how we can optimize those resources and we uh, try to use those I mean, the existing resources with full efficiency so considering these things and some of the recent developments in the sti landscapes the diplomatic relations uh, globally has been changing rapidly uh, particularly with reference to the covid pandemic which has created new dynamics or new challenges and the diplomatic relations in terms of science and technology particularly i would focus it has been changing some of the close friends uh, uh, earlier have been now changing there is a change in some of the close friends some new uh, friends we could gain and some of the close or I mean, earlier friends we uh, could not retain or continue in that way then there have been unprecedented progress in the sti worldwide in the last one decade particularly we can see there are several wars continuing globally and because of that the science and technology innovation sector is also being affected and there are requirements for different uh, areas or different themes also which is rapidly changing then recent rapid transformations in terms of relevance scope and scale if you see uh, prior to the covid pandemic our focuses were different but once the pandemic approached uh, we could see very good example of uh, uh, changing the relevance scope and scale and i can see uh, I, mean, i can share here one example is some of our auto industries came forward in developing portable uh, some devices which were very much useful in the covid treatments also because they saw that their industry is going to be closed because of pandemic so if it, if they can repurpose their existing facilities towards the requirement or towards the new challenge the country is facing and we could within a three months time almost we could repurpose and the industry came forward the research institutions came forward and we could successfully uh, Uh, successfully fa face or successfully fight with the challenges arise due to the covid 19 pandemic then the rise of disruptive and impactful technologies brought in big challenges globally but I, I, and including india also but there are some great opportunities for india to lead here because if we see in the traditional technology sector or traditional science sector we are way behind but if something is new or Uh, I mean, disruptive. Then everybody in the globe is also facing, or they will also start from the beginning. 
so there if we join somewhere and we if we uh, can achieve something then it will be a good opportunity for india particularly in terms of the covid vaccines we saw india could do well in the i mean uh, well i mean do well and compete with many of the developed countries and similarly in terms of the electric vehicles we are able to do well now in terms of the energy transitions also we are able to do well now uh, beyond the expectation of the uh, developed countries india could do well some of the recent initiatives one is uh, starting with the pm's clarion call uh, call for atmanirbhar bharat where india sees the opportunity to leverage the uh, i mean harvesting the indigenous technologies and promote grassroots level innovations which is mostly the inclusive innovation we are we have been advocating about because the global uh, or the innovation being driven by the developed countries is mostly for the uh, global north but india as a country in the developing state in the developing states can probably focus more towards the inclusive innovation wherein we can cater to the global south instead of focusing uh, to target in the global north then uh, in the country if we say there are several mission mode programs have been launched uh, to gain uh, te uh, technological as or to gain or to solve many of our uh, problems which the country is facing uh, currently one is the uh, icps which is integrated cyber physical systems then the quantum frontiers mission then the deep ocean mission then artificial intelligence mission mission vaccine development process then uh, the mission uh, on bioscience for human health then waste to health and natural language translations and most of these uh, missions are targeting some of the challenges we have some, some of the challenges or priority issues we discussed in the previous slides then the recent development of the recent uh, one is the anr act 2023 which was passed uh in the monsoon session of parliament during august and fi the final notification of this act was on 14th august uh, uh, this year which is to basically establish the anusandhan national research foundation and this is going to act as a apex body in the country to provide direction on how to conduct the research and development activities in the country and also to address many of the challenges we discussed in the earlier slides like whether it is the uh, inequality or inequity in the uh, distribution of uh, funds inequ inequity in the availability of resources and how we can develop the institutions particularly the state universities or the post graduate colleges or central universities and bring them at uh, national level to compete among the eminent institutions also and it is also going to target how we can improve our scale in many of the factors like how we can improve the uh, quality of research how we can improve the resident patent filings also further and how we can improve the innovation activities also then one progress in uh, one progress towards the open access in science is uh, the recent efforts of government of india towards uh, establishing a or introducing a subscription based model for scholarly knowledge and a central repository for all snt data generated among generated out of the publicly funded research funds uh, i hope uh, those who are in the academic institutions uh, or uh, national uh, institutions must have been aware about the new subscription model which is uh, uh, being negotiated with the publishers global publishers or major publishers and it is going to be implemented in a phase wise manner in the first phase only the national institutions have been targeted national institutions uh, and uh, state institutions also then it will be extended further to other institutions even the private institutions also then uh, the recent initiative uh, of government of india uh, to provide accessible snt infrastructure as we uh, discussed there is lot of limitation in the access and availability of research infrastructure in the country although some of the programs being sponsored by dst and other central uh, departments is to establish specialized infrastructure facilities among the institutions one popular one uh, in dst is the feast grant which is providing almost every 
uh, university departments or departments uh, in the eminent institutions also a research grant to establish a research laboratory only it is not a research project or not research grant but only to establish a research laboratory and which is again upgraded after five years initially it is given for five years and after five years it is further upgraded into a better facility basically with enhanced grants with this iSTEM portal we can see some of the institutions are having uh, the research infrastructure uh, facilities but some of the institutions are not having the infrastructure facilities so how we can give access to the students or researchers from institutes where no infrastructure facility is there but they can avail a infrastructure facility in a nearby institutions so this iSTEM portal is working towards that iSTEM portal uh, has mapped each and every infrastructure facility which is established through the government grant or government support then they map the usage and availability time how much what percentage of that instrument is being utilized and how much is free time available so that free time can be utilized by researchers and students outside the institutes so based on that there is some user nominal user fee is also <coughs> charged so that uh, two benefits coming out of this one is those deprived of any access to research infrastructure they are able to use the facility and through the user charge being collected at the uh, institution which is hosting that infrastructure facility that can be used for maintenance of those institutions also so two purposes being fulfilled through this activity then india has recently brought out a geospatial policy uh, uh, in uh, december 2022 which is also boosting uh, the access to data and uh, technology development in the geospatial sector and this is one uh, big step or a leapfrogging step it is called globally because most of these geospatial data were kept uh, restricted without giving access to the public or researchers and uh, just before the geospatial policy the government has released a geospatial guideline wherein uh, a large amount of data were made freely available for the industry and for the researchers so through that we could see uh, a big boost in the geospatial industry and geospatial research in the country i mean generating good amount of revenue also in uh, a span of less than one year so with this probably i would stop and uh, the platform is open for discussion i would be happy to take up some questions and raise some uh, uh, issues and along with uh, the new challenges like particularly anrf uh, although i missed out uh, to uh, share the uh, I, I just shared the opportunities with anrf but not the challenges so i would uh, I mean, uh, briefly share some of the challenges. If uh, those who have closely monitored the ANRF, uh, ANRF is uh, targeted to be established at a cost of 50,000 crore in coming five years. And out of those 50,000 crore, 70% is being targeted to be roped in from industry sector. We are sharing or we are discussing that uh, we are not able to fetch uh, attention of the industry into the r d investment or investment into r d then how we are going to uh, get 50 i mean 70 percent almost into the anrf so there are some mechanisms proposed but it is going to be a uh, area for research or area for uh, debate for our CPRs and network of SPRs also how we can improve this and how we can achieve the targets in the ANRF and similarly how we can improve uh, the full-time uh, equivalent researcher base also in the country because it, it has been a chicken and egg problem due to unavailability of funds the researchers base is also not being improved and since the researcher base is not there the grants available is also not being utilized appropriately. 
so how we can solve some of these problems and there are many other things but probably keeping in view the uh, uh, time available i'll probably open this uh, for discussion now thank you okay uh, thank you so much uh, dr panigrahi uh, for educating us with the recent developments and also the challenges uh, in fact uh, especially uh, i think we can also discuss quite a lot about this uh, recent initiatives particularly access to the journals or access to the database in fact uh, uh, this uh, geospatial data also that also you can probably elaborate a little bit as, as we uh, go on discussing uh, for the information of the uh, uh, students and faculty members also, i think at niger also we have seen that our journal subscription is now put on hold uh, because from 2024 onwards there will be one nation one journal subscription earlier it used to be like so Niger has a lot of money and they have access, but others don't have access to it. So that policy will change, uh, you know, uh, from 2024 onwards. Uh, so uh, uh, I think uh, we can uh, open the floor for discussion. Uh, I think Professor uh, Alok Dhawan had uh, raised the hand first. Uh, 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 yeah, Professor Dhawan, you can unmute and uh, ask. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Panigray. I think a very uh, nice overview of the scientific landscape um, just a few sort of queries in terms of when you say women in science and technology applying for emr grants i think they're limited to institutions and universities but a large number of women are now employed in the industry as well so is dst by any chance capturing their data as to how many women in stem are getting into industry earlier there was a taboo people even men didn't want to go into industry because of lack of stability but now i see a lot of people uh, going into uh, the industry so although they've done their phds maybe they don't have a pds but they walk into industry even after masters if they don't do phd and if they do phd a lot of industry people are not uh, doing phds after joining the industry so maybe that data is not getting captured as well so i think 18.6 is what uh, the um, science ministry is supporting in terms of emr grants um, but the number of women in stem perhaps might yeah, be right. more if we consider uh, the companies yeah uh, thank you professor Devan. Uh, it is a pertinent uh, uh, i mean challenge in getting uh, relevant information from the industries also and as per our experience in uh, while collecting the data from industry side uh, it is very low response we are getting uh, from the industries in terms of uh, submission of data or sharing of data uh, as part of the national survey so here uh, we are mostly uh, getting the, ma the maximum uh, response we have received is near to 60 percent in the last survey and we have to i mean further we have to estimate uh, the numbers basically so yeah, it is true. Uh, the exact number of uh, uh, women participating in the industries is not capturing well in the country, wherein it is also an area how we can how we can develop a robust system in data collection mechanism also, for which we have recently supported a uh, project to uh, IIC, uh, the CTR at IIC, to uh, bring out a TPR in this regard, how we can establish a proper uh, SMT data collection or data survey mechanism. The other thing I would like to mention here, that large number of uh, SMT graduates or even PhDs actually go into schools and colleges for teaching science. So I think they're also contributing in a big way to our science ecosystem. So, or for example, uh, people who are involved with the uh, regional science cities. Right. So I think they're all people who are contributing. And I, I know a lot of people in, let's say, National Council of Science Museums, who are all uh, science graduates and they're contributing to the science ecosystem, um, directly into the science ecosystem. So I think it will be a good idea for, uh, you know, the CPRs and SPRs to also look at those people who are contributing in different facets of science and technology, uh, rather than doing maybe hardcore research. That they are uh, educating the masses in terms of creating awareness in science and technology, uh, creating a scientific temperament in science and technology. I think that will be very relevant. The other thing you mentioned about publications, uh, the quality publications going down. Uh, I think it is, you know, if you look at what uh, UGC is now saying, it will require PhD uh, 
it is uh, in a sense counter purpose of what the country demands so again i would say that you know on the one side we are saying we don't require phd students to publish papers on the other side we are saying you know we are getting less number of papers and the quality is not good uh, it would be a good idea to actually uh, roast in some of these people and see how i mean the country is done very well in converting wealth into knowledge but why so some knowledge into wealth argument and that is primarily been because of lack of uh, patent filing systems um so after coming to the state government uh, in up i can share there is no patent filing center in this entire state it is remarkable and i have raised it several times even with the up council of science technology but they don't have any patent filing mechanism so the entire state including universities and the grassroots innovation that is happening is not getting uh, sort of into the mainstream at all uh, tifac is helping us in a big way um, as far as our institution is concerned and i'm very glad that earlier it was not possible even for our institute to file patent because of the exorbitant cost but tifac has helped us in the past 3 uh, years itself we filed more than 10 patents i think these are some very pertinent issues that need to be ironed out either through dst or through anusandhan uh, research national research of uh, through forum uh, so yeah i mean i think I, i have some more points but i think i'll i'd like to hear uh, from you regarding this and then uh, maybe share a few more sure 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 thank you and thank you for flagging this uh, patent filing challenges also it is there uh, although uh, through our uh, sstp program some of the states have been uh, receiving some support through tifa uh, for patent filing but yes it's inadequate basically keeping in view the uh, researcher base or institution base across different states just one center or one uh, uh, facilitation center is not adequate that's true and my last point if you permit me uh, is when we talk of market driven r&d uh, and i've been seeing it uh, since i was back in csir uh, honestly it is very difficult uh, to bring industry to the table and ask them to share their problems they keep saying that we have a problem and we you know you should do market driven research and you should do industry driven research and you are part of dst i think you would also understand when they come to the table either they don't know what kind of product they want they want everything from you but they don't have a clue what they want and same is happening when we are looking at uh, uh, these kind of scenarios in up uh, so there is a lot of push on uh, sort of society societal research we can still perhaps do when we find out problems in the villages etc but then an implementation through the government becomes a challenge but i think as far as industry is concerned they are still not as open as let's say in the us or in, in europe where they give projects even in taiwan i see in australia they give projects to the institutions and they ask them to provide solutions right so i think uh, we are still maturing in those terms so i I'll, i'll stop here uh, for want of time i think thank you thank you thank you okay. thank you so much sir uh, uh, now uh, may i request dr vijay lakshmi to unmute and ask yeah very good afternoon good morning sir uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, as uh, prof uh, doctor was mentioning uh, ours is a spr uh, on geospatial uh, uh, policy only we are working with ngp actually that's the reason like our spr was recognized and as i said in the previous meeting also uh, we have started btech undergraduate program and the challenge is like as we have uh, faculty recruitment uh, is not there and shortage of faculty uh, one of the challenges uh, in terms of uh, eminent persons teaching the board or uh, sharing their knowledge so if dst can uh, lend a hand for a few years especially for one or two academic years if the dst can support us we will be able to deliver the objectives request and second thing is sir like i feel uh, as uh, dr ralok was uh, mentioning about industry participation uh, we do work with cii here in uh, hyderabad confederation of indian industries uh, green business council uh, wherein they have the problems they are posing or rather the 
problems uh, they have. Only uh, difference is like uh, they have their own skeptical about the solutions. Like though we have demonstrated on some of the water treatment technology, we need support in scale up those technologies. Like what are the research being done at university that can be scaled up? So the PhD can just bridge gap between the industry and with the academia. Uh, that's all from me. So thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, madam. Uh, on the first point, particularly uh, uh, supporting uh, because your institution is not able to provide adequate faculty for uh, continuing the program, the graduate program, there in probably DST won't be able to help you because we are mostly focusing on the research side, not on the academic side. And uh, second one, yeah, it is a pertinent issue. Uh, DST is uh, trying its best, but probably uh, there is a uh, longer path to uh, be traveled in this direction, how we can have a better industry academia relation or uh, uh, collaboration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, then may I request uh, Professor Avinash Kumar. Good morning, everybody. And let me first congratulate Dr. Padimrahi for making a wonderful presentation. It was very eloquent, hard, but we were able to highlight the, uh, I mean, uh, salient uh, salient features of our current science and technology ecosystem. And I'm coordinator of the SPR in Sardar University, and the mandate is standarding innovation ecosystem. And I am also working head of IPR cell. And earlier I was a DRDO. And I will be focusing more on innovation, patient, and technology transfer. And let me again, uh, Dr. Alok has highlighted that there's a, I mean, the, we need to have more facilities for filing patent application, at least in UP, that's not mentioning. But let me tell you, I will go beyond uh, patenting. You see, the patent filing is not an end of the affair, it's just the merely the beginning, and as Dr. Panigai has mentioned there is a valley of death also beyond creation of innovation. What I feel, uh, having worked in the university system for the last few and a half years, there, there has been an increase in patent filing. Maybe it's NAC driven or innovation driven, I do not know. But when it comes to technology transfer, there is a problem. Let me tell you, Dr. Panigai, mostly in investing in PRL1 and PRL2 level. How to take it beyond TRL1 and TRL2 level? What is happening? Let me tell you at the ground level, our technician, our faculty members are filing patent applications and they are very hopeful, they are very eager, they are very interested. So, if there are few success stories, then there will be more patent filing. It's not only about uh, what should I say, earning of royalty, the satisfaction that they have created something, it is being used by the society. So, that the catalyst come and what I feel, I mean, uh, what I feel, you have mentioned there is a gap in, as far as government and academia is concerned, there is a platform, no doubt, university and PhD. Then uh, government and industry, there are PhD, CCI, or CII, the platforms are there. I suggest for university, if you can have some platform like association of university technology managers, like in the USA, industry can help the universities in bringing technology managers. I'm not talking about the research only, the technology managers on one platform so that the flow of information is more structured. We can have some meeting place and BST can provide uh, to their problems in one platform and suggest uh, some solution. That will be a very good thing. In USA, it is very successful association of university technology management. I'm not talking about the research, Dr. Pineley. I'm taking talking about it. Uh, I mean, the decision of this research uh, result to the society through the mechanism of patent and technology transfer. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Abhinas Kumar. Uh, this is a practical problem in the country. And uh, uh, in fact, let me share with you uh, the draft of the new science and technology innovation policy has discussed uh, in detail about this aspect, this challenge, and has also some uh, 
policy measures or policy uh, suggestions uh, in this regard to establish some clusters uh, in, in the academic institutions where an industry can come and participate and also a interface in each and every institutions to interact or engage with the universities also this have been factored but uh, let's see how early the new policy is going to come or if not also slowly how we can increase or how we can establish such kind of facilities in the institutions also thank okay. you thank you sir thank you okay thank you so much sir ravnesh uh, now the floor is open here uh, for any uh, comments uh, on our discussion yes okay sir uh, pranay kumar sir let, let me okay uh, person uh throw some unpleasant questions uh I mean, questions not directly at you generally uh, for a discussion uh, i strongly believe our problem is uh, our obsession with numbers uh, look at uh, the developed countries for example us and china we, we keep harping on numbers saying that you know we are the third largest after uh, us and china in terms of uh, producing uh, quality research outputs uh, what is but, the gap in numbers yeah there is a huge gap it's not a gap it's a gulf uh, yeah. but the problem is uh, us probably has a, a very interesting uh, cadre based research and uh, research and technology uh, science, science scientific research in fact they recruit teaching faculties they recruit research faculties uh, here we are kind of caught in between we do not know what actually we are recruiting i was listening to uh, dr vijay lakshmi's concern uh, there is there is a serious dearth of scientific man manpower we can't deny that uh, we we maybe we are a little privileged because we are sitting here where we have the luxury of uh, funding and you know, many other things go further down 20 kilometers away from here you know how the colleges and uh, universities are that's a very sad story but that's what reality holds for you uh, coming back to what i started with the obsession with numbers i'll, I'll bring in if i uh, take a course on sociology of science and technology uh, the social dimensions of scientific research uh, remember uh, back in late 70s and early 80s when margaret thatcher was the prime minister of england uh, there was a huge brain drain for uk because then people left thatcher was very clear in her policy saying that you know if you are not improving my development indicators public money is not being given to you as simple as that there is nothing called curiosity driven inquisitiveness driven science spend your own money public money will not be for for this that was a very hard stand but maybe you know uk uh, reaped the benefit out of the, the phenomenon is actually called thatcherism that's right uh, so we are a developing country we have our uh, problems uh, development yeah. indicators are are quite i don't need to talk about that so this problem solving ability of our science and technology i don't know it's, it's probably too late uh, i mean it's not too late we great uh, great to know about such initiatives which is basically focused on creating such ecosystem which can uh, get you you know uh, local solutions for the local problems i mean it's, it's time we should actually stop looking westward for our problems our problems are very unique I mean, let's find solution to it. But you know, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm taking long time. Uh, given this obsession for numbers, and uh, uh, there is another concept called Matthew effect, where you know, it's the rich and renowned getting more awards, more recognition, more uh, more of everything, at the cost of others who could also do well. How do you look at Indian scientific, uh, I would say, community plus the policymakers? such a thing i mean if people do not know me i would not be getting funding it's as simple as that true see uh in this uh regards i mean uh, and since you flagged uh this uh, <coughs> face, value, face value i mean if your face is known or face is good then you are getting more grants or more recognition more awards 
and if not then your proposal is also not evaluated fairly or you will not be considered for different uh, i mean at different levels or different platforms dst have been so far uh, focusing on the competitive grant mechanism wherein we treat equally whoever is uh, the researcher or where from they are or from which gender they belong to they are treated equally the proposals received are evaluated in same lot of uh, uh, peer review mechanism two three years back i guess uh, we received uh, a query from a department related parliament standing committee there are parliamentary standing committees which usually review or evaluate our <coughs> demand for budget <coughs> so th there are specialized committees for science and technology sectors and the committee asked us uh, first they asked us all data about allocations release institution wise state wise everything they collected they probably engaged somebody to review and then they fired us a set of questions two questions i'll just refer here one question was they have said five states are taking away 51% of the total research grant how dst see this as justified then six states are getting only 11% they were identified so called the global north and global south kind of divided disparity within, disparity within the states so some of the top ranking states the five states were probably tamil nadu uh, telangana maharashtra uttar pradesh and one more bengaluru karnataka kerala not kerala not no. bengal also not bengal also uh, not karnataka yeah karnataka sir yeah. the... tamil nadu karnataka telangana maharashtra right. and uttar pradesh these are the five then the six include rajasthan madhya pradesh jharkhand chatisgarh and one more so it was a challenge for us how will respond what will say then we tried to map it with the institutions since we are having all the data of uh, uh, the availability of institutions we could see 47% of the institutions are also in the national share 47% of the institutions are also lying in the five states which are getting 51% of the grant then the states which are getting 11% of grant are having just 7% of the institutions that means they are doing well 7% of institutions getting 11% of the grant and 47 getting 51 is probably not proportionately proportionately not doing well in that term so we said that or uh, framed our reply in that line so where we need to work is strengthening the institutions strengthening or upgrading or upscaling the level of the institutions to grab more grants since there is no institution or the researcher base is not that strong they are not able to grab the grants but if you go with the competitive grant that is the uh, open uh, competition then the committee recommended to establish some specialized grants then okay it is public grant we have to abide by the instructions coming from the parliament so then we launched or we came out with the uh, special focus area. special focus that is the sure grant mm -hmm. uh, in, in university excellence something uh, it is particularly for universities okay. uh, state universities uh, uh, in the states and then again eminent institutions how much percentage of grants are getting i mean received by eminent institutions and how much is going to the state university this was also a question so now we have started working into the uh, equitable distribution of grants also but it is all with the demand and supply kind of thing how you have to sure. any other point or any other question should uh, in continuation with sars concern i just wanted to uh, i mean focus on the incentive structure in india for innovation and science and technology uh if you look at the incentive structure of uh, america back to 
the uh, era of Thomas Edison, who has uh, more than 1900 patents in his name. And uh, because there is a system of a good incentive, if you invent something, there is a particular uh, reward for you. And America could realize it very early and they started giving uh, patents and uh, also better incentive structures. And that is why uh, lots of innovation uh, you know, uh, happened in America during that time. But compared to America, if you look at other countries, uh, as Sir said, uh, Asher, uh, and some backward country today, uh, due to uh, a very bad incentive structures, uh, maybe due to the absolute structure of politics, they did not allow better incentive and even they did not get very good renown, uh, remuneration for, for the work. And that is why even if there are very good people like Thomas Edison, uh, inventions could not happen. Like in why nations fail, Asimoglan Robinson uh, was said that uh, there can be more than uh, 10 Bill Gates in India, but because they don't have that kind of facilities, we only get one Bill Gates in America. So in that context, uh, is it about only the incentive structure in India that needs to be uh, more focused? Uh, for example, uh, we are always demanding for a hike in uh, fellowship. I mean, that is our incentive. And again, after our PhD, if we will get a, a very good industry, that is also our incentive. But if you don't give us incentives, the motivation to study and do good research will definitely reduce. Uh, so, considering all these points regarding the incentive structures, uh, is it only the incentive structure in India that needs to focus or the fundamental structure in teaching and uh, research uh, for which we are uh, discussing about the low quality of publications and other things. So it is the entire ecosystem or the STI landscape in the country that need to be reformed or need to be transformed. It is not the incentive only. You are giving incentives like you raised the, uh, the uh, pertinent issue uh, recently uh, resolved to some extent. High can the fellowship. Is it enough to build your career? No. The hike, is, hike in fellowship is just going to make you happy for five years. <laughs> Beyond that, if there is no opportunity, then what you will do with those hike in, five year, hike in fellowship for five years? No. So ample opportunities need to be. So it is a kind of chain of mechanisms wherein both incentives are required, the platform is also available so that you can once you complete from one stage one you can smoothly transitioning to the stage two also if there is some challenge definitely you will look for how you can escape from the existing system and go to some other country wherein you get better facilities and in our surrounding there are several countries who are looking forward to receive indian students because they do not have adequate number of students but they have good facilities. So we are losing our students. So we need to focus on the facilities also. Then the mechanism, how we can bring in the participation of industry and other sectors also into the national STA landscape. So far, we are not able to attract more industries into the system. Only we are last on the public fund. The public fund is not going to make it enough or I mean, provide adequate platform or adequate opportunities. So we need to bring the industry also. Once the industry is coming up, then comes if some technologies or if some knowledge is gained, then how to patent it or how to protect it. On that line, again, you need platforms. So it is the entire landscape we need to focus. It is not one step or the other step. It is entire landscape wherein we need to focus. And in a planned way, we can focus. So ANRF, establishment of ANRF is one step in that direction, but time will be only telling us how it is unfolding and how we can gain some successes. At least some baby steps is also welcome. Uh, Dr. Vijayalakshmi, again, do you have some more questions or comments? Uh, yeah, if you permit me, sir. 
just uh, two or three points from my side like to continue uh, like as the discussion was going on about the research incentives absolutely a uh, fair amount is given to the jrfs or srf and pdf that is uh, very well taken by the government uh, which should be appreciated by all of us i think and the second issue is uh, the flexibility of institutional mechanism like compared to uh, the premier institutions like nits or iits and the isas you know, i mean the uh, institutions the national institutions have got their own flexibility i suppose whereas state universities uh, there is a uh, constraint like uh, having the mechanism in flexibility like if i may be having a project a dst funded project or somebody or a consultancy project at the same time i was tasked with the academic load See, unlike uh, western countries if a uh, professor is having nsf grant like the national science foundation in us if they have a grant from the nsf project is being undertaken they'll have the academic load flexibility so probably that kind of mechanism uh, may be worked out from the ministry or the dst side also sir like uh, uh, flexibility in the academic load and the research load Uh, the number of workers and all that that could be one uh, challenge like where we are also facing and uh, yeah academic break like in uh, western countries a professor is uh, allowed to take a academic break if he or she is having a national uh, uh, federal government uh, projects so that can be implemented to encourage faculty from taking up a uh, number of uh, r and d projects or the industry consultancy works also that is what i feel yeah, thank you yeah thank you ma'am your uh, the point you have raised is uh, also the answer to that uh, uh, query is also with you ma'am the very first uh, point you raised you said you do not have adequate faculties then there must be huge load on you is it because of adequate faculty yeah. base how, how we can Yeah, in that line, yes. how we can uh, demand that if I am getting some research projects, there should be some relaxation in the academic yeah. activities. That so is what. Ah, basically, we do not have adequate human resources placed in the institutions, catering to dedicated activities in different aspects, whether it is yeah. academic or research or support to uh, the research or academic activities. Yeah, especially in the state university, challenge. Yes. True. 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 Uh, yesterday happy. only I was discussing with somebody, uh, so I, I mean, uh, flagged this issue that we need to really work in the state universities particularly, because most of the time a project is being handled by a faculty, they have to along with the research. In addition to your academic activities, you are contributing to research. While doing research, you have to also manage your finance also because you are not getting adequate support from your administration also. Absolutely. With yes. all this, how we can expect efficiency? So we need to have enough or adequate human resources placed in the institutions also to take care of exclusive activities as per their requirement or as per their uh, subject areas. True. So sir. true. We need to work on these areas if. Uh, We have adequate facilities or adequate human resources. Also, people can devote more time towards research in addition to their academic activities. Exactly. Yeah. And we do not have much incentivization also for taking projects. Also, so far we have incentivized through academic activities. How many classes you are taking and how many? Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, how many hours you are giving to your academic? Activity. That is the first priority. Research has never been a priority for this state university. Exactly. in fact most of the time we are dependent on uh, ad hoc faculty or the guest faculty who comes and takes the yes, class yes true 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 there's one challenge yes, probably sorry. you can address uh, from being the apex body at the dst or the ministry uh, with the state governments thank you sir yeah definitely uh, in a relevant platform we will raise this with uh, uh, the ministry of education definitely we cannot do much Other than raising this or flagging this with the Ministry of Education. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, so I think uh, there are no other questions. We may close because we we'll have another round of meeting. So I would like to thank uh, all the participants who have joined online, and uh, also thank uh, uh, Dr. Panigai uh, who kindly agreed to come to Nigeria and deliver this talk. And uh, 
Uh, this is because you have, you have some other engagement, but I pulled in here and uh, uh, so that we have a continuous discussion on uh, the national developments that are taking place. So, thank you so much, Dr. Panigay. Now, may I request uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Pranesh Swain to ask. Yes. So, so, to the, huh? <laughs> and then we'll have another round of it. We'll have a small uh, uh, presentation. So, uh, so, uh, I think these are not required. I know. Ah. <laughs> we just started with this. This is promotion of our local yeah. handlers. Local so and also we will mark the This we can stop. This <laughs> yes. We will start it from this year. Yeah, thank you so much. So, thank you so much. Uh, for right. the thank you. For this, uh, thank you so much. In 15 years, we have recruited only 120. Why would I blame others? That is the dot of manpower. It's because of us. We have not recruited people. 